Hey, this is Dan from userspice.com and I wanted to do a video to kind of give you an introduction to how multi-language support works in UserSpice. We have just implemented the feature in early 4.4 and um, basically the way it works is that it is designed to translate user-facing pages. And what's a user-facing page? So if you're an admin and you come in here to the dashboard, in all reality, users are never going to see this page they're going to see the login page they're going to see the um you know their account page things like this but they're never going to see the actual admin panel so the idea is that what we've done as kind of step one of our multilingual process is to translate the front end the pages that they'll see password recovery all of that kind of stuff it's a lot of work to do this and so we're hoping to get people on board to translate into other languages and We'll just kind of show you how it works. So when you first install or update, you won't see anything different. You have to go into the dashboard and from there you can click settings and your general settings. And you'll see down here there's a couple of new options. The first one is the default language. Um, and then the second is allow users to change their language. We're gonna do the second one first just to kind of show you. So if I come over here and click this, then when I go back to the home page. I'm gonna get the flags of the different languages that I have available. Like I could flip this into Canadian and uh, you know, yeah. So um, basically the idea is that all of the text of the project has been translated in a way that you can create your own languages. So we're gonna look at, at one more setting back here. Uh, the other setting is, I'm gonna change it back to English, to real English. Um, you can come here and you can click on settings and general and you can choose there's basically a few different ways that i expect people to use this one is you are in portugal or you're in brazil and you're going to want to set which we don't have that here you or let's say you're in romania you're going to want to set it to where everybody just sees romania you're in romanian you know so we're going to do that the other option is that you can allow people to pick their own language and regardless of how you do that you can still set a default language for the site so how does all this language stuff work? Let's go back here and we're going to set the default language of the site to English. And so when we come back here, everything is good. We're in English. And then I'm going to, uh, let me open up this project here for a second. So I'm going to open this up. What you'll see is that I have um, this folder here called Lang. And what these are, these are the different languages that we're offering. Now, if you don't want to offer Canadian just delete it delete this file and it's fine um, You know and then when you do updates you can choose whether you want the latest Canadian language or not uh, We may make a way to lock these languages out, but for now just delete it if you don't want that language in there um, When we open up the English US You'll see that it's just a bunch of arrays and so let's just say that you uh, Are from Portugal and you want to create your own language so what you can actually do is is copy this file and you can paste it in here as, let me see, paste so I can paste it and then I can call it uh, what you want to do is you want to use the language code for your country so for Portugal that would be PT PT so now I save that and then uh, let's see what else I could do I could also um, I'm gonna copy a flag in there real quick if you go in this users folder and flags You'll see that I have with the same exact name, but um, ending in PNG, I've got the flag. So I'm going to copy this in there. Okay. Okay, so now I've added another flag in there. So the way that's going to work is now when you go to the home page, you'll see that there is the Portuguese flag here. So obviously this stuff is still in english and you'll have to translate yeah you have to translate that into your language um but let's say you're in the process of translating it and you want some help maybe i mean let me show you some of these features here so let's say you go to here and the dashboard and you can go to plugins let's see oh, plugins there's this new plugin called User Spice Language Checker. So what you can do, you can install that and activate it. And then once you open it, 
you can say that I want to check for untranslated language keys. And so when I come down here and I click this, this is going to tell me all of the things that are still in the same language as English. So in other words, if I were to come in here right now, we have 229 things that haven't been translated. So let's say if I come in here and I change this, let's load up this one. Nope, wrong one. I load up this one and I change this to, we'll do this one because it's easier. So PT, PT, okay. Now, when I come back to the language checker tool and I resubmit that, there's 228 because PTPT PT has been translated. So um, this tool will help you go through there and see if you're missing anything or anything like that. Now this other one is kind of cool. Let's say we update user spice and we add some new language keys to this folder and you just don't have them because yours is out of date. So you can come in here. I'm going to comment this out to make these three missing. And you'll see that when you come in here, you can click this and it's going to tell you that these three keys are missing from your language thing and this is what they are in English. So you'll know to go in there and add that to your language array and make sure that your language is all up to date. So um, I've got a little error here i got to fix. Um, oh, you know why? It's, it's there because I commented that out. That normally won't be, <laughs> won't be a problem if I didn't comment that out. Uh, so anyway, these are the tools that allow you to do some basic translation of your site now if you have um there's a few other things i want to show you so let's look at this let's go back to english for a second and let's say that you don't like the fact that we call home on the menu home let's say you want to put it you want to call it house or whatever else you want to do so you can come in here to user c lang and then right here you can double click this one and you can comment this in and you can basically come here and take any one of these things and copy it here and you can override it in here so whatever you have in this file is going to override whatever we have in our file and yours is never going to get broken by our update so now that that's commented in if I come here, this says homepage. So we're using your language instead of our language. And that's kind of the way user spice works. We like to give you control um, in a way that will not break anything. And so, I mean, you could go in there and edit all these language files, but every time we do an update, something new is gonna come out and we might have to add some extra text. In fact, when we do, um, in the short term, we'll be putting them down here at the bottom. Uh, to make it easier for you to find. But as we add these things, like you don't want us to keep breaking your language. So feel free to put them in this file here. And then if you want to, you can also create, if you have other languages, you could also do a PT hyphen PT, all that stuff. Any language files you have in here, it'll look here first. So there is one other thing that is a little bit um, more complicated. And so what I want to show you, I'm going to log out on my version here. So this terms and conditions down here is a really long file and so what um or the it could potentially be a really long file so what we've done is if you are in english then what's gonna load is let me get here includes includes uh user agreement so you see this is not php this is just html but basically if you are in english then this file is going to load. If you would like to make ones for other languages, then what you can do, you can go into user C and lang and terms and cond, and you can basically create an ES hyphen ES or whatever you want, and you can overwrite those uh, terms and conditions there. So there's a breakdown of how all that works right here. But anyway, this is the very basics of creating your own language for user spice we're going to have follow-up videos to show you how to do that in plugins and other things like that but for now uh, we would love it if people would help translate user spice into other languages if there's something you don't like about our translation some of our keys are missing and things like that so um we could use your help so i did think about one more thing that i wanted to talk to you guys about and that is what happens if text is completely missing from those language files um, if you've ever 
messed with it in the past and you've seen that it can throw all kinds of PHP errors and we've dealt with that in version 4.4.05 or 06. Um, so I've commented this line out here and basically what happens is in this first one I'm going to try to echo something that is not a key. This um, in order to do language, like, oh, let me start this way. Uh, if you wanted to manage something, put something in here that was uh, a proper way to do it, you would do echo lang and then uh, like that. And then we'll just concatenate a break on there. Um, that looks right. So when I refresh this page, you'll see... Um, logout A is legit text and then um, this one here this key is not anywhere in the system so I mean I could go like you know like that save it this key is not in Canadian it's not in Portuguese it's not in English that key is nowhere to be found on the system so what it does is it puts this message here text is down the biffy which is the uh, Canadian version of saying the, the text is down the toilet um, missing text so um, basically what you can do in your language files is you can set a string that would happen if for some reason you accidentally misspell one of these things and the idea is not really to be a translation but the little brackets around it are kind of a nice easy way to just let you know that something screwed up but we're not going to throw all kinds of PHP errors and all that kind of stuff so um, let me show you one more thing that I think is kind of interesting and you may like it you may not like it uh, we can get some feedback on that but so if I were to comment these back out and then I have um, so we'll come back here to the main page now there's no text there so I'm going to comment this one in called menu account and we're going to refresh the page and that says account A and so then what happens is if we come in here to the Canadian one and comment this line out then what it's going to do here is fall back to English which is um, I think is a good compromise I mean again I'm an American so I'm thinking about this from an American perspective but um, you know we're basically right now we may make an option so you can decide how to handle that but the kind of thought is at least somebody could translate it if um, if it's missing in there uh, so what will happen is it'll go to the en.us and it'll grab this one and so like if I change this to account 2 and save that that is gonna come up and say account 2 that's getting the English translation and so um, that was kind of an executive decision that's how get text works and some of the other ones uh, will fall back to whatever string you had in there uh, anyway open to some feedback on that hope it helps hope it gives you a better understanding of what it is we're doing thanks for all your help I appreciate it hope you're enjoying the user spice if you have any questions catch us on discord or on the forums or post a comment below